Welcome, welcome to Shadow Me Tarot. Uh, today we're going to be doing the full zodiac readings, and what we're going to be asking is what are each zodiac's thoughts um, and what those thoughts are manifesting, what um, is blocking you or getting in the way of what you want to manifest, what your ancestral wounding is that needs to be healed, kind of getting that block out of the way, um, how you need to communicate. Um, what's in your near future at the end we're gonna do a yes no question we're gonna pull a numerology card and then we're going to um, pull a vibration or a frequency card um, to see what you need to focus on in order to make your dreams come true all right let's get started thank you beautiful spirit for all of your guidance love and light how can Aries live in the timeline of their highest good deepest desires and ultimate fulfillment how can Aries, all right, now what thoughts is Aries manifesting? Fantastic. And what other thoughts is Aries manifesting? What other thoughts? Any other thoughts that Aries is manifesting? We have, ooh, the tower. Um, so maybe kind of, you're coming out of a place. Oh, I see what it, okay. I heard this recently and a friend actually said it. So I, I just kind of feel like <clears throat> you have been rocked to the core and you are turning this weakness or whatever it is into um, a superpower. Um, and you are really kind of transforming. So let's kind of just see what's in the way of that transformation. What are, what are you, um, having trouble letting go of? Let's say, let's see, what are you having trouble letting go of? What are you having trouble letting go of? In order to, um, successfully, you know, get past this transformation or get to this transformation or the next step in your transformation. What is, what kind, what's blocking you? Okay. Spirit said those, <laughs> those ones. All right, so this one's face down, which covers all of these. We're gonna go with the bear claw first here. We've got the um, cat bone in the reverse. We have, the ladder and then what's covering all of them is the rabbit bone in reverse which is also a tower so I feel like there's a double tower moments here um, <clears throat> but from this tower obviously we're coming out with a with a ladder um, um, maybe you got pretty cut up and bruised in this last um, this last catastrophe um, or you know whatever I just feel like this, there was like a fight. I feel like it did real damage and it broke, it broke. Um, it broke the foundation, your foundation. And you're just kind of climbing out of it at this point. Um, what ancestral wounding needs to be healed here? What ancestral wounding needs to be healed here? What ancestral wounding needs to be healed here? is Aries ancestral wounding that we need to take a look at. What is the ancestral wounding that is affecting this blockage? Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. Is there anything else you want to say? Anything else? Because it looks like it's trauma-based and magic-based faith. Um, so I feel like <clears throat> this was very traumatic and you're getting through it using your face faith. Maybe some of you were disowned or banished 
or shunned from your something from your foundation, your your family of origin. Maybe you've always felt disowned. Maybe you've always felt like the black sheep. Maybe um, you feel like mm. let's get some clarity on this particular. I feel like the next card is really designed um, let's get some clarity on this disowned oh wow it's really causing you a whole lot of anxiety here um, so I almost feel like you're not, I don't know, it's really hard to say that you're not talking to them, but I feel like you're moving towards them but, or you're wanting to reach out to them, but they've disowned you. And I, that's what it is. I really feel like you want to move towards your family, but you've kind of like disowned them and said, I'm never going to speak to them. And it's causing you a whole lot of anxiety to kind of go back there. I feel like I feel like you're in a place where you are getting solid foundation. You're like everything that once was is no more and will never be again. And you're like, okay, who am I and where am I right now? I feel like this person or this Aries or these Aries folks are maybe in a place where they feel like they have been that maybe your health has been impeded somehow. Um, maybe you've been reckless with your health um, and you're just kind of climbing out of that hole. I do kind of get a rock bottom kind of feeling that you've hit that already, that that's what this tower moment was, that this surprise was. Um, and I feel like, I really feel like um, your thoughts, what you're manifesting is really, um, is really just having stability. Um, it, it's really just having stability. And I, and, um, I think what's preventing your transformation is this, you're maybe not talking to, to family or you're wanting to come near family, but you feel, I feel like it says banishment ashamed, but I feel like the disowned, um, or it says banishment and disowned. Um, but I'm feeling ashamed. I feel like you feel ashamed, unlovable, unforgiven. Um, just not that like they maybe don't want you there but and maybe there's a lot of worry on their side and your side um so i kind of feel like they're kind of um you just kind of digging yourself out of a ditch is kind of how i feel um i if any of you guys are doing step programs i'm feeling a step four <laughs> step four kind of thing here um and then let's see what we have here so your transformation um no, it does not make you happy. It never makes, emotions suck, guys. I mean, it is what it is. Sometimes when you gotta dig down, but when you feel them, it's like taking a shower, like from the inside out. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So how do you need to communicate? How do you need to, um, how do you need to communicate peacefully, right? What is the best way for you to kind of communicate peacefully in your situation? Okay, so, Everybody's worried about a fight. Everybody's worried about a fight. Everybody wants to talk about a fight. Something stormy, something catastrophic, something that everyone has emotions about. Um, there is a compass up here. So I'm going to say rely on what you've learned and the tools that you've gained in this process of finding your stability. Remember your north. You have one. Rise above the storm. Focus on your compass. That's what I'm hearing. Focus on your compass. Um, stay above the storm. Stay above the fray. What, how else can you communicate? What's another way of communicating? Um, if we're not fighting, how can we better communicate? This one wants to come out. Okay, so this is going to be a transition. It's going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, so how do we need to communicate? We're going to definitely change the way that we communicate, okay? 
Um, so we're coming from this place of fear here. Um, and the fear for you is that I'm unlovable. I'm unforgivable. Um, and for a moment, I think spirit's going to ask you to change that thinking. Um, and know that spirit loves you first. And if spirit loves you, then you are lovable. And you are a spiritual being learning to be human, not vice versa. So... We've got manifestation again. You manifest what you think about. So this is a gift. This is a good opportunity for you to be grateful. That is the gift here. Okay? So in a storm, in order to defuse the situation, I'm sorry. One, right? I hear you. I understand you. Appreciate what people are telling you. Appreciate and manifest yourself listening and being grateful for um, for the communication. Because I feel like if you are fighting, you are communicating. But change the way you fight. Manifest compassion. Being compassion for this. Be the compassionate one for the situation. Feel their heart. And be grateful for them sharing. I do feel like this is very much kind of a family thing um, that is healing, um, healing with this. Okay. Um, what's in your near future? Oops. What is in your near future? What is in your near future? Tell me more about this transformation. What is in your near future, Aries? What is in your near future? <laughs> Communication, for sure. What is in your near future? What is in your near future for this transformation? Okay. <clears throat> so here's what I'm hearing. If you cannot communicate, right? If you cannot be kind in your communication, you may consider writing it down so that you're kind. Don't throw, you know, word daggers at them. Just say what you feel, what you need, and own, you know, the I statement here. Um, but if you can't not fight with them, write it down, or and say, or until it, with a cooler head, or say absolutely nothing. You are going to have to fight to do this. Is going to. You're going to have to fight to keep that in balance. Um, I almost feel like this is a weakness that you know, and, and the way that you're going to keep it in balance is that every moment you don't speak, <laughs> be grateful for, because you are not digging a ditch if you're not talking. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. Your job is to listen. If you did something wrong, you've got to own up to it, not defend yourself, and, um, you know, fight the good fight, and, and rely on your strengths. Um... Don't let your shadow side win. All right. How do we kind of uh, change this vibration? I, I think what we're going to do is the law of attraction. So if in this kind of communication or whatever is kind of happening with this relationship that you're coming back to, this familial relationship, um, you've done a great job already just getting here to build yourself up. Um, you're kind of going back to kind of a triggering situation and you feel less than. And you don't have to feel less than. And that's what these cards are for. This is um, the Law of Attraction cards because what you think about, you bring about. So if you're going to bring about a fight, you're already thinking about it before you get there. So stop doing that. Change your, change your thinking and manifest that it is a gift you get to see your people. It's a gift that um, you, you get to have their, their time. Um, their, if they're welcoming you into their home then that is a gift and, and be received and accept the gift. Be grateful. 
Um, all right. So how do we kind of, what, what can we give Aries to kind of keep this all into balance here? What can, oh, wonderful. All right. We've got my dream thoughts are not my creative thoughts. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So there's, this is kind of a differentiation between, um, <clears throat> what your dream thoughts are versus what your creative thoughts are. And your creative thoughts are really the kind of the ones that you're vibrating and co-creating with spirit, right? Your dream thoughts are what you're thinking and you can't manifest from thinking. You have to manifest from feeling. So it says, whatever you are thinking and therefore feeling and that which you are attracting is always a match. So if you're attracting a fight, instead replace it with gratitude. They might be attracting the fight, but your answer here is gratitude. Moving back to the card here. I'll repeat it. Whatever you are thinking and therefore feeling and that which you are attracting is always a match. Also, what you are thinking and feeling in the dream state and what is manifesting in your life experience is always a match. Your dreams give you a glimpse into what you are creating, but you are not in the process of creating while you are dreaming. So if you're dreaming about winning the lottery, you can't win it until you know you have already won it. Um, and it has to be believable. You have to be able to believe it to your core that this is happening. Um, the, um, okay, so the other quote that I've been working lately, and this is from my friend, Connie Friends, and at the... Clash on Clark. So if you're in Chicago, there's a theater, Clash on Clark. Um, you meet a great guy who has these amazing quotes that I've been using tonight. All right. So um, make sure that you're, you know, just kind of getting into the vibration of what you want in your life um, rather than, yeah, just make sure that what you're thinking about, you're, you're bringing about. So Think about things to be grateful for, to raise your vibrations so you can have a good experience and it will help keep you grounded in your tools. That's kind of what I'm hearing from, from Spirit Aries. All right, so we're gonna wrap that up and we're gonna start with, okay, Aries, if you have a yes, no question that you would like to ask the cards, go ahead and focus on that now. And the answer to your yes, no question is yes, the star. There is hope and new inspiration coming. Stay calm and enjoy the spark. <clears throat> All right, you guys. And then the no numerology one that we have here. Let's get your number for this week. Okay, get your number for the week. All right, Aries, what is your number that you need to be looking for this week? What are the numbers or numbers you need to be looking for this week? Wow, I knew there was more than one number for you guys. All right, so we've got the Magician, number one, um, which actually fell out in the pre-shuffle for that deck as well. Um, so then we have the Magician, the Chariot, the Emperor, the, t the High Priestess, the Moon, and the Lovers. Okay, so... <clears throat> I feel like you are, I'm just going to interpret these. So one, seven, four, two, eighteen, six, um, and one means man, seven means insight, four means structure, two means woman, th uh, 18 means self-knowledge or harmony, um, and um, six is humanity and experience. So I feel like just based on these cards, some of you are hoping to see some action. Feels like in your, your meditation, you're like, when is it supposed to happen? When am I supposed to see the light and have that, that inner knowledge? And you don't have to work that hard just saying. Um, it's, it's just softer than that. It's, it's, it's just softer than that. Um, sometimes <laughs> anyway. So I feel like they're saying, uh, be more aware of your body. 
Um, it's also, it's also philosophy. It's not just meditating in the moment. It's carrying that peacefulness throughout the day. Um, this four here is, I, I almost feel like it's like a time management thing. Um, and to listen to your body. Um, there's both masculine and feminine energy here. So I feel like they're in your masculine side, maybe your work side. Um, you just kind of maybe, maybe some of you are moving. Um, but yeah, one, seven, four, and then we have two, 18 and six here. And here, I feel like you have been kind of thinking about how can you do things more efficiently? Um, 18 is self-knowledge and harmony, which is the moon. So I, I feel like, I feel like it's just saying, follow, trust in the process. That's what I have. It, 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 the, the whole, there's so many cards here. I had to do some sort of interpretation and they are in congruence because they do say like, you know, the high priestess, the moon, the lovers and all these things. So there's lots of different messages in these cards. Um, if we should probably add them all together. So this would be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, 23, right? 23. So I see 29. So 11. So this is kind of like, um, some of you might be in a twin, fl twin flame connection, um, and you're hoping for, um, you're hoping for kind of a more, uh, spiritual union. Um, and I think that's on the feminine side. I'm really feeling it. Even though we have the emperor over here, I feel like this is very much, oh, I'm sorry. This is the masculine energy. I'm sorry. This is the feminine energy. I feel like um, this is kind of more the, the masculine side of either your personality or your couplehood. But it's like there's uh, there's a desire to have a little bit more inner knowing, um, less self-doubt, kind of making sure that they're following the process, right? And then I feel like there's a, a call to just trust in that process, trust in spirit. And I feel like on the feminine side, maybe there's a little less patience, I feel like. Um, and um, maybe more time to kind of check in and with self and can be have a commitment to self as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and read these cards as they lay as well. Um, So I feel like the overall number for you guys this week is 11. Um, and that's definitely going to, and actually a number of cards, this adds up to 11. Then we have the one here and we have another one here in the 18. Um, so I feel like, all right, let's go ahead and just read these out loud so that, cause you guys can't see them. Um, so yes, there is hope. New inspiration is coming. Stay calm. Trust in the process. Enjoy the spark. A time to start something, action and movement. Decide to lead. Connect to higher knowledge through philosophy and meditation. See the bigger picture and find the hidden meaning and the light. Materialization. Follow the plan. Get things finished. Focus on the end product. Have something tangible to show. Overcome your doubt by seeing all sides of the equation. Connect to the other and to intuition. Wait until you're sure. And then self in karmic clarity leads to unconditional love. If I'm in har harmony, forgiving the past, I can create a new future. Um, and then feel it. Experience the feeling of being human in all ways. Test, do, feel, learn in order to grow and truly know. Um, so we did have in the previous reading before that somebody was going back to their family who was an incredible amount of self-doubt, right? Um, so it's just be patient with the situation and know that you are worthy. You have to trust that you are worthy of love. Um, 
in order for it to come. And I'm seeing two people. I see a person who's going home to family um, who may not feel accepted. And then I see also like a marriage kind of thing happening. So I feel this weird dichotomy, dichotomy in both a positive, and I don't want to say a negative, but worrisome. But for both situations on the feminine energy, I'm feeling that um, use your logic to overcome your fears, right? Question, um, interrogate your fears. Why am I be afraid? You know, nobody's going to die. You know, I can go this way and then what would happen? So really question those fears. Oh, if, you know, are am I going to die? You know, yeah, am I going to die? Am I going to lose everything? If I did lose everything, what am I going to lose? You know, like question your doubts um, in order to kind of gain a new perspective so that you're not lying to yourself, that you're loving yourself. Um, and forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for the past. Um, experience forgiving it as well. Feel that. Um, and as you feel it, um, you'll clear the way for new loving experiences to kind of come into your life. Okay, I'm going to end it there. If you liked this video, please like, subscribe, and share. I love you all, and I'll see you again soon.